So another quick video working with an impossible material. Uh, I've got the default Bryce scene and default Bryce sky and there's a cube, Bryce primitive. I've just placed it there and I'm going to put it at the world center and I'm going to get rid of the infinite plane and I'm going to take my camera and place it inside this cube at the world center. But I'm also going to rotate the camera very slightly on each of its axes because if it ex aligns exactly with the origin of the cube you get some funny artifacts coming from the corners so I've just essentially put it right in the middle but rotated it slightly to avoid some curious noise that occurs. Now I'm going to enlarge the cube and we're inside this cube. Now the cube isn't fully dark you might be able to see though it's probably, you're probably not, you take my word for it unless I make it very large, there you go you can see it now, that there's some haze inside this cube, possibly haze, possibly fog. Let's see, turn off. See, I've turned the fog off, so it must be haze that's causing this effect. So, although no light's getting in this cube, and we can prove that by disabling the sun, you still get some effect. Now, if I modify this cube now, and it's not diffuse, but make it just perfectly reflecting, what you get is an effect caused by the reflection of the haze within, si in, within the cube. So I'm just going to reduce the size of the cube to and, and widen the field of view to give you some idea of this effect. So what's happening here is that the, the haze is getting in the cube and because it's lit up it's getting reflected perfectly off the, the mirrored surface of the cube. But what if I make an impossible material here that sets this value of reflection higher than 100? Well, what I suspect happens here, and I'll show you how it's done, is that it causes the surface to become a light amplifier. So not only does it reflect what's there, it also adds a little bit to the light. And you can create different effects with that. In this case, we're going to create an abstract effect with it by using light amplification. So, put a blob in there, hold the shift key down, click on the name, go to basic, and we'll rework this check blue to be our amplifier. So go into the deep text editor, we only want the alpha output, and we need the noise function here to be modified. So go into that and go distance squared minimum octaves 1. You can leave the rotation and leave it at 3D, but we want a frequency of minus 1 to get this working. So when you see this stripey pattern, you know it's producing something that's out of range and can't be displayed in the deep text editor. That value is highly negative. It's extremely negative. So far out of range that it won't be very useful for us here. And we want a positive value anyway. So pop that into the next component and use difference. Uh, at the moment, that'll just produce zero. But if we go here and modify this function to none, that means the difference will result in a highly positive value. That positive value, as it happens, is far too high for us to still be able to do very much with it. So I'm going to now add this component to the third component and use multiply. And then by modifying the sign filter in this component here, I can bring this down used by multiplying it by a very small value by modifying this filter right down so that the output of this is very low when it's multiplying it into a range where it becomes usable but still more than you can normally get so when you see these bands spread out to this sort of level that's coming into a range where you've got an output that could be useful so I'll check out of here and now you can see if I turn the reflection down and it's using a scaling value by turning alpha scaling on I can put this under the control of this uh, slider here, I can take it down to say 1 and that shows that it's below what, what is normally 100 reflection. 2 looks slightly above it. So you're aiming for something like uh, 1.9 where it's just slightly above 100, 100 reflection. Now if you're not sure just remember that value 1.9 and go back to 100 and look at the size of the highlight on there and then go back here and go 1.9 and then see if it looks bigger, which it does. So that is now a ref amplifying reflective surface. So I'll check out of here, switch the view from the camera and we'll see what effect that's had. So it's got brighter inside this cube. Now this means that if you increase the maximum ray depth the effect of the haze is going to get amplified because maximum ray depth allows more reflections. With each reflection the light is getting amplified so it'll start to scale up and as you can see it's all got rather bright. 
So, at the moment, the size of the cube is dictating how much haze is getting inside the cube, but the other way of controlling that is to go into the Skylab and from the Atmosphere tab reduce the level of haze that there is there. So we'll reduce it, we'll thin it out considerably and see whether we still get an effect. OK, so it's gone rather dark, but if we want to capture more haze, now we can just enlarge the cube, and there you go, we've got some more haze in this. So by having the value set quite close to uh, being ordinary level of reflection, we, we, it makes it easier to pin down what uh, where we are in the in the scheme of amplification. It's just feeding back on itself and uh, getting more exaggerated, but the pattern will change if you increase the level of reflection, because it means that the the more things have bounced, the brighter it'll get, so you'll get more contrast. So I'll take that up a little notch there and render again, and then I'll have to reduce the size of the cube so it doesn't encompass as much haze, and then look at the effect forming here. So I'm just tweaking the size of the cube down, and now because the amplification effect, you start getting this uh, region in the middle where you get a dark area, which is a rather nice pattern, I think. So I'm just enlarging slightly to get a bit more of this pattern forming. Now, you don't have to stop with just a cube. That's how I've gone too far. You, you can start introducing other primitives into this scheme and see what effect they produce, or put them inside the object. So I've just got it to the point where it's now fading out in the distance. If I want to emphasize this amplification over this gradient, then I'd go back into the material and take it up a very small amount. This is a scaling amount, and the, the, the figures that this uh, function is generating are extreme. So now it's gone too bright again, so I'd have to remo reduce the size of it. And you'll see now the, the holes will appear bigger, and there'll be a higher contrast across its range. As you can see now, it's tailing off a lot faster because of the the repeated bounces are getting back in faster, so that's probably too far to be displayed. So I'll go back to 2. So if, if it's a bit dark, uh, because there's no light source in this, you can render fairly high maximum ray depths uh, in a reasonable time. So oh, well, that's, you can see now that the it's all gone a bit extreme again. So I'll go back to 1.9. So it's uh, the balancing of uh, the level of haze the level of reflection, so that's going to be quite complex in there. Now I'd like these circles to be filled in, so if I enlarge the cube slightly it's going to get brighter and we'll get more detail in there. So y you're balancing effects off against one another, which is often the case with these extreme values, to, to bring them into usable range, because either they're going to be too dark, the effects are going to be too dark to see, or they're going to just burn out and turn very bright. So the level of complexity in this pattern. Now you can see the sort of illusionary patterns, like these these zigzag lines occurring as a result of the interference between the different levels. So I think that's an interesting effect. Probably it would benefit from being less complex. So I'll just have a final tinker with this. I'll drop it down to 40, which is going to make it darker because there's going to be less reflection. And then to just to, to increase the brightness of that, all I would need to do is increase the size of the cube, but it the air is quite sensitive to settings. So I've lost that uh, darkened area in the middle because of uh, not having the same level of amplification. So I'll take the reflection up by a fraction. You can see now it's got brighter. Then I can shrink the cube to encompass less of the haze. Alright, it's gone too far again. There's a very distinct threshold here. When uh, I'm just trying to get it so that it's fading out in the middle a bit and it's still got some structure. I guess I rather like this cross effect. It reminds me of some kind of uh, like f effect from a science fiction movie, like uh, 2001, for example, when he's going into hyperspace. So I'll just let that render out because it's coming up to 10 minutes. I'll say that's the end of the video. So I expect to see a few more of these things. I can see there's a lot of potential for creating some weird ab abstract effects with these overpowered reflective materials. So this is just my, if you like, first experiment with this, and uh, we'll see where it takes us. But uh, of course, feel free to uh, make your own experiments and let us know about them. Okay then, that's the end of the video. I hope you uh, found that interesting and that you'll uh, experiment with this yourself in your own renders.